Hey folks, this is the second installation of Climate with a lie in the middle. Breaking down the main points of our larger climate argument from the video, They Want to Blame You. In part one, we showed the omissions of our so-called experts in regards to part of the space energy factor. And we saw they hid most of the CO2 data. In addition to the links to those two videos being directly below this video, we will now dive deeper into why they hide the CO2 data on climate.gov and introduce some basic points of the solar connection for later episodes. Basically, what I have here is I've got a bunch of links pulled up that I've used in the past, either from Counter-Strike or uh, How to Watch the Sun or Energy from Space uh, or any of the other things. So, Billy, basically what I have here is I'm looking at CO2now.org. Can you go ahead and pull that up? What I'm looking at right now uh, in the afternoon on Thursday, it's 393.31 parts per million in the atmosphere, and that's CO2. That's the amount they had for September. It was added on October 9th. And it reminds me that in just a day or two, we're going to be getting an updated number <clears throat> uh, for October. And on this page, uh, you know, you go down and you look at the increasing CO2. And this brings up uh, something that, you know, I, I have to remember that not everybody knows. There are literally tens of thousands of people that have come here since the last time we talked about this. So, basically, um, another one of the links that I, I like to show when we talk about CO2 in the atmosphere, uh, it's got CO2, temperature, methane, uh, and, and insulation, basically all on one chart together. And it basically shows how these things are all pretty well correlated. Um, if you do some deeper digging, there are many researchers who suggest temperature uh, actually leads carbon dioxide and that modern uh, climate discourse has it backwards. Um, but just for now, let's go with the idea that these uh, that temperature and CO2 are pretty much perfectly correlated for thousands, tens of thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands of years. And then, do you remember the other chart I showed? And uh, I, I kind of played a little trick with it. Uh, the first thing I did was I, I didn't show the entire chart. I only showed up to right before the Industrial Revolution. And it also showed that for tens of thousands of years, CO2 and temperature were um, pretty much perfectly correlated. Do you remember that that chart? Yeah. Do you remember what, what I was hiding over on the right side of that chart? The, the, the hockey stick. Yeah, the hockey stick, exactly. Um, enter, enter human innovation, industrialism, and we start pumping carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. And, uh, Billy, you can't see this because I'm doing a screen capture on my machine simultaneously while we're on Skype. But, guys, the temperature is right about here. The global average temperature is still right about here. So, this shows that these things were perfectly correlated until humans really, really got involved. And this piggybacks on the idea that the sun and energy from space is really driving all of this. And now I've got the sunspot numbers pulled up from the modern minimum, actually a little bit before the modern minimum, up to now. Um, now the modern minimum was the deepest portion of the last, uh, the mini ice age, the last one we had, and therefore significant for that reason. Now, given what we know about CO2 and temperature, uh, you know, both are technically going up but we are, we are definitely, I mean, we are nowhere near where temperature has been on this planet. Um, we haven't even hit uh, where we came out of the last couple of ice ages. Those were all, 
you know, significantly higher temperatures than we have right now. But anyway, the real global warming, so-called, uh, really occurred right about here. And what I'm doing is I'm circling the area from about, uh, you know, 1960s to 70s, 80s, and up through the 90s. And this is pretty much following and during the highest sunspot activity since the Maunder Minimum. Uh, and what I'm using right here, although it looks kind of amateurish in black and white, these are the best numbers we have. This is um, from NASA. This is Solar Science, uh, msfc.nasa.gov, if you want to go get it yourself. And basically it shows that in addition to the highest peak, one, two, three, we have four solar cycles in that time of global warming that were higher than pretty much every solar cycle since the modern minimum, save maybe one that looked like it matched them about equally, but certainly wasn't uh, any higher. So this is the period of global warming when the sun uh, and when the solar activity appears to be highest. And you combine this with what we already know about Earth's magnetic shield uh, shutting down and the fact that more of the solar energy was coming in. And I want to follow up with uh, an article that we were discussing uh, a bit before called Un Are Sunspots Disappearing? And uh, this was... Uh, how do I describe it? This was the impetus to start to start looking into this field in general. Um, the National Solar Observatory um, started getting on board with the idea that, hey, the solar magnetic field is weakening in general. The overall strength of the field is weakening. And by 2015, there could be no sunspots at all. Uh, interesting that they made that call in 2009 and here we are in 2013 and despite this current uptick that we're in and we have seen a few of these solar upticks even during what I'm describing as the solar magnetic shutdown we have basically been describing ridiculous solar quiet for this solar maximum and even here um, you know Matt Penn of the National Solar Observatory says you know personally I'm betting sunspots are going to come back uh, but acknowledges that there is evidence that they won't. Um, they acknowledge that this work has caused a sensation. It's pretty controversial because of the implications. Because the last time this happened, we were in a little mini ice age. And if that happened now, the implications on the ability to grow crops to feed the entire planet is just one of a vast number of issues that uh, we basically haven't had to deal with since we spread ourselves all over the planet. But, you know, they, they even injected skepticism into their own work. But they, they probably shouldn't, and we get this at leaf.org. Uh, this is the, I've now got the magnetic fields pulled up from 1966 to now, and this is one that we've pulled up a number of times recently. I'm sure you remember it. And this... This is a different measure. This is not the overall magnetic field strength, but this is the magnetic field correlated with the solar cycle as when the solar cycle flips, and that would be my phone there. But each time the solar cycle flips for the last couple times, the sun has been getting weaker and weaker, and right on target here, we could be about to see no sunspots, no magnetic field strength. It's very interesting, especially when um, we recently had that Irish Times article where Dr. Elliot laid out how a lack in solar activity can really mess with the jet stream, cause horrible, uh, horrible winters for the Northern Hemisphere and everything else that would go along with that. Yeah, not the, the stresses that put on consumption and our energy system that we're having, you know. Yeah, great it's, point. It'd be a strain on almost every resource if, if we go into something like that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But anyway, um, this uh, this was basically just a short little summary 
of of one little piece um, of this climate issue. Um, climate with a lie in the middle. Uh, we're going through bit by bit uh, the different pieces of the argument and trying to pull them together. And um, of course, these would be the different arguments that come out in the video. Um, they want to blame you or energy from space. And we got a long road ahead. There's constantly uh, new viewers coming in. And this stuff is not just, you know, snap, you, you just pick it up. It really takes going into the links and looking at the stuff. Uh, you know that as well as I do. So... If you have to, go back and re-watch those videos, because um, everything is cranking up, getting faster, getting very real. All right, it is what it is. Be safe, everyone. Peace out.